Hi, my name is Seth Miles, and uh, along with my wife, Susan Trujillo, uh, we are the parents of Ava Riley Miles, who is now 17. Um, Ava Riley and Susan and I, along with our two other children, were living up in New York when Ava Riley first started suffering from some abdominal pain. Um, she was actually doing a show up in New York and was feeling intermittent pain that was somewhat uh, debilitating, but she was a trooper and a soldier and really wanted to get through it. So she was fighting her way through this pain on a nightly basis, um, largely getting by on gas X, chicken noodle soup, and uh, a whole lot of uh, perseverance. And we weren't concerned, but we weren't terribly concerned because, you know, all of us, I think, at some point in our lives experience some sort of abdominal pain. And while it obviously was affecting her, she was fighting through it. And we sort of assumed and hoped that over time she would get better. Um, she didn't get better. And we started a relatively long process of going from doctor to doctor, starting off in New York. Uh, and we would see doctors and she would go and meet with the doctor and typically the doctor would prescribe some sort of broad spectrum antibiotic. Maybe she would get better for a few days. Maybe she wouldn't. Um, then we go see another doctor and the process would start again. And during the process, she tried a bunch of different medicines. She tried um, different diets. At one point she was on a FODMAP diet, which was pretty strict. Uh, and difficult for her to um, deal with because her diet essentially went down to nothing and uh, nothing really helped. Um, and the show that she was doing in New York moved, uh, ended actually, so we moved back to Miami. And that started the process of going to see a whole another set of doctors. And the cycle kept repeating itself. So we'd go see a set of doctors, the doctor would maybe prescribe something, maybe think it was psychological. We try some new approach and maybe it would work or help at least for a short period of time, but, but oftentimes um, over the course of days or weeks or even instantaneously, it failed. And it became very frustrating for her, um, undoubtedly, because she was suffering. And it became frustrating for my wife and I because we couldn't help her and we really didn't know what to do. And we were seeing doctors who we trusted, who had great reputations and we were getting conflicting advice at times. Um, and the long story was that nothing was helping um, until we eventually ended up with Dr. Saps through some fortuitous fortune. Um, my wife read a book that I think he was mentioned in, and we were going to go see some doctors in Boston. Eventually they led us to Dr. Saps. And Dr. Saps really was the first doctor who I think fully listened to her, um, but also had an approach that was holistic. And over time with hypnotherapy and some medications, um, and what I would consider to be a lot of listening, she got better. And uh, it wasn't even that long a period of time. We saw changes pretty quickly. And then ultimately she was able to get just about fully better. Um, she learned a lot, I think, during the process. Uh, she's really the first adversity she faced, I think, in pretty much anything. And she learned a lot of grit and determination that allowed her to, uh, to, to fight through it. And then ultimately, I think she was able to apply that same mentality to getting better. And, uh, and I think my wife and I learned a lot. Um, and uh, what we learned, I think, largely boiled down to listening to a variety. Um, it's so easy just to put yourself in her shoes or in child's shoes and sort of listen or hear what they're saying, but not really listen to what they're saying and think that it's going to get better because you think it'll get better or because the doctor thinks it'll get better. And a lot of times as adults, we have confidence that we can heal our children, um, but we don't necessarily, I think, listen or intuit what it is they're saying and, and what they need to be healed. 
and that applies to parents and I think quite frankly it applies to doctors as well and what made Dr. Sav so exceptional and so successful I think is he was the first person in the process who really took the time to listen um, to what Ava Riley was saying and to hear what she was saying and to appreciate it and understand it and not just um, pull his way through an approach in order to, to give her a pill or a diet that would instantaneously get her, get her better. And that, um, that approach that he had, that patience that he had, that willingness to be open and to listen and to apply uh, a, a, a systemic process to getting her better was all the difference in the world. And she got better and it's really thanks to him and it's thanks to her as well because she persevered and, uh, and, and did what she needed to do. She got down on herself, but she never lost hope. And I think the, the lesson that we took away from it was, again, number one, you have to listen to your child and what they're telling you and, and appreciate it and respect it. And number two, you also as a parent have to be an advocate for your child because I think it's natural for us as adult, adults, whether we be parents or doctors or any other professional that comes into contact with a child, we probably give some natural discount to what they're saying. And so if your child is saying something and the parents aren't standing up for that and advocating for their feelings and their affects, um, then I think they can get ignored. Uh, and Dr. Saps and, and the approach he gave us really was the opposite of that. And it's what succeeded and what helped and we are eternally grateful for it. Um, so thank you, Dr. Saps.